The Greek language underwent pronunciation changes during the Koine Greek period, from about 300 BC to 300 AD. At the beginning of the period, the pronunciation was almost identical to Classical Greek, while at the end it was closer to Modern Greek. Overview The most significant changes during the Koine Greek period concerned vowels, these were the loss of vowel length distinction, the shift of the ancient Greek system of pitch accent to a stress accent system, and the monophthongization of diphthongs except o and u. These changes seem widely attested from the 2nd century BC in Egyptian Greek, and in the early 2nd century AD in learned Attic inscriptions, it is therefore likely that they were already common in the 2nd century BC and generalized no later than the 2nd century AD. Another change was the fricatization of the second element of diphthongs O and U. This change likely took place after the vocalic changes described above occurred. It is attested in Egyptian Greek starting from the 1st century AD, and seems to have been generalized in the late Roman period. Another series of changes was the fricatization of voiced stops, which is widely attested in Egyptian Greek starting from the 1st century AD, but may have been generalized at a later date, possibly in the late Roman or early Byzantine periods. Yet another series of changes was the fricatization of aspirated voiceless stops, which is attested in several locations from the 1st century AD, but seems to have been generalized at a later date, possibly in the late Roman or early Byzantine period. A last change possibly related to fricatization of aspirated stops is the loss of h, which may have begun as soon as the late 1st century BC in Egyptian Greek, seems to have taken place no earlier than the 2nd century AD in learned Attic inscription, and had most probably been generalized by the late Roman times. <laughs> <laughs> issues with reconstructions The primary issue comes from the diversity of the Greek speaking world. Evidence suggests that phonological changes occurred at different times according to location and or speaker background. It appears that many phonetic changes associated with the Koine period had already occurred in some varieties of Greek during the classical period. An opposition between learned language and vulgar language has been claimed for the corpus of Attic inscriptions. Some phonetic changes are attested in vulgar inscriptions since the end of the Classical period, still they are not generalized until the start of the 2nd century AD in learned inscriptions. While orthographic conservatism in learned inscriptions may account for this, contemporary transcriptions from Greek into Latin might support the idea that this is not just orthographic conservatism, but that learned speakers of Greek retained a conservative phonological system into the Roman period. On the other hand, Latin transcriptions, too, may be exhibiting orthographic conservatism. Interpretation is more complex when different dating is found for similar phonetic changes in Egyptian papyri and learned Attic inscriptions. A first explanation would be dialectal differences influence of foreign phonological systems through non-native speakers. Changes would then have happened in Egyptian Greek before they were generalized in Attic. A second explanation would be that learned Attic inscriptions reflect a more learned variety of Greek than Egyptian papyri. Learned speech would then have resisted changes that had been generalized in vulgar speech. A last explanation would be that the orthography in learned Attic inscriptions was artificially conservative. Changes may then have been generalized no later than they are attested in Egyptian papyri. All these explanations are plausible to some degree, but would lead to different dating for the generalization of the same changes. To sum this up, there is some measure of uncertainty in dating of phonetic changes, indeed, the exact dating and the rapidity of the generalization of Koine Greek phonological changes are still matters of discussion among researchers. Orthographic variance in contemporary written sources is the most direct evidence, but it is not enough to date a change in every context. Testimony of grammarians and, to a lesser extent, transcriptions into foreign language are interesting because they can indicate which pronunciation was regarded as standard by learned speakers. However, it has been argued that transcriptions may in some cases be conventional rather than phonetic, and Greek grammarians appear to describe learned pronunciation while ignoring established vulgar pronunciation. Topic: <laughs> Sample reconstructed phonological systems. Boeotian, 4th century BC 
Although it belongs to the Late Classical period rather than the Koine Greek period, Boeotian phonology is shown here as it prefigures several traits of later Koine phonology. By the 4th century BC, Boeotian had monophthongized most diphthongs, and featured a fricative gamma. Note that, in contrast with Ionic Attic and Koine, Upsilon had remained a back vowel in Boeotian written o. Long and short vowels were still distinguished. Theodorson argues that by 350 BC, the majority Attic dialect seemed to display similar values, except for Upsilon, which was a front vowel. Perhaps controversially, his reconstruction has already cancelled vowel length distinctions and merged Upsilon and Eta merged with I, as in modern Greek, early monophthongization, and perhaps even vowel weakening due to the shift to a stress accent, is also attested in Thessalian of the 3rd century BC, suggesting that several minority dialects had an advanced vowel system by the early Hellenistic period. <laughs> Short vowels Note that in this case when transcribing epsilon, omicron and also later i, omega the phonemic symbols, e, and, o, denote true mid-vowels, i.e. neither close nor open. Long vowels The y value for oi is attested later, in the 3rd century BC. An intermediate value of o stroke has been suggested by some, perhaps attested in spellings of a for oi indicating a premature loss of lip rounding leading to e, rather than i, c, f. Text below. <laughs> Diphthongs Diphthongs O and U likely retained their classical pronunciation. A single interchange with beta, indicating an early change to avenue, ev, is found later, in the 3rd century BC. <laughs> stop and former stop consonants Fricative values for beta, delta, phi, theta and chi are not unlikely, but are not attested in Boeotian in the 4th century BC. A fricative value for theta is attested in Laconian in the late 5th century BCE through spellings with sigma, including in some plays by Aristophanes. Delta also appears to have become fricative in 6th century BC Ellen. See discussion on consonants below. Additionally, as noted above, a single example of u for eb is found a century later. Topic: Other consonants. No reference has been found on the status of the aspirate in Boeotian at this period. Topic: <inaudible> Accentuation. The tonal accent system of ancient Greek probably remained relevant. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Sample phonetic transcription. The following text, a Hellenistic Boeotian inscription, is rendered in a reconstructed pronunciation reflecting regional phonological developments. Monophthongization and vowel raising are clearly seen in the specialized Boeotian orthography which uses eta instead of i, a for eta and a, a and omega for oi, oi there is also a spelling of a for oi, indicating an early loss of lip rounding resulting in e, not i, it can therefore be inferred that at this stage oi became o stroke, not y. It is not implausible that in vulgar Attic the y greater than i shift had already occurred in the 4th century BC, but was resisted in coin due to conservative interference. Also notable is the continued use of digamma for with Diucleus k katila antithenti tan idion threpton he oniuma zaparina here and te serape paramanazon otis has ka zion the anenkalitos tan anathison poumeni dia to sigma omicron, enedrio keta ton nomen Greek pronunciation. Ducal e circumflex s k ko tila anti e n t i ta n widia n t reptin h onuma zo pure i acute na herein te serapi param e acute na san a u t e s has ka z o circumflex n t i anekal e acute to s ta n anat e san p o j u acute mean dia to sunhedrio kata ton nomen diocles and katila dedicate their slave whose name is zapurina to the safe keeping of serapis provided that she has remained in service with them blamelessly for as long as they live, they make this dedication through the council according to the law.
Topic: <laughs> Learned pronunciation, 4th century BC until early Roman period. Until the beginning of Roman times, some learned speakers may have retained a conservative pronunciation that preserved many traits of the ancient Greek phonological system. However, already in the 4th century BC, the popular dialect in Athens may have been moving in the direction of the coin without differences in vowel length, as noted above. Even in Attic official inscriptions, the learned pronunciation appears to have disappeared by the 2nd century AD. The learned pronunciation Described here as mostly pre coin Attic. <laughs> Short vowels <laughs> Long vowels The A pseudo diphthong was confused with iota in manuscripts, except before a vowel, where it was confused with eta, so it probably retained its ancient value there. Note also that a monophthongal pronunciation of yi as y is written in parentheses as a dialectal trait of Great Attic beginning in the Late Classical period. In addition, a probably first lost its final element and merged with e, but later raised to i, as seen in alternations between spellings of a, a for the 2sg middle ending. Both pronunciations are given as possible dialectal variants. Topic: <laughs> Diphthongs. <laughs> Long first element diphthongs are written in parentheses because they were gradually monophthongized starting from the classical period. Dionysus of Halicarnassus prescribes them as a correct pronunciation, indicating that the diphthongs were no longer pronounced in natural speech. By the 1st century BC, the process of monophthongization was over. See diachronic description below for more details. Topic Stop consonants Ancient grammarians and transcriptions suggest that voiced and aspirated stop consonants were retained until the beginning of the Roman period. The voiced stops probably became fricatives before the voiceless aspirates. Other consonants Some scholars regard as an allophone of n, others as a separate phoneme, which is why it is put in parentheses. What exact sound r represented is a matter of discussion, but it should probably be regarded as an allophone of the r, notated by ρ. Zeta denotes a zz, geminate between vowels. Accentuation Learned speech Retained the tonal accent system of ancient Greek. Topic: <laughs> Sample phonetic transcription. The following excerpt is part of a Roman senatorial decree to the town of Thisbe in Boeotia in 170 BC, and is transcribed with a conservative variety koine in the early Roman period. The transcription shows partial pre-consonantal word final raising of a and a to i, retention of pitch accent, and retention of word initial h, the rough breathing. Peri hun this beta isologus epoisanto peri tun kathau tau us pragmatin hoitines n te filii te hematerai enamen and hopos autois dothos and omicron his ta kath hautus pragmata exigisuntai peri tutu tu pragmatos hutos edoxen hopos coentos manios strategos tun ek tes singletu pi n te apataxe hoi and autoi ek tun demosion pra gm aton kai tes idios pistios finontai greek pronunciation peri ho n T I Z B I circumflex S Lu S E P O J E acute santo peri tu N cat hot U circumflex S P R A motto N hoitines N T P Ilia I T he metera I anemi nan hopo S autois dot O circumflex sin hoist ta cat hot U grave S P R A acute mata E K S E E acute sa N T A I peri T U acute two two P R A acute mottos H U acute to S edoxin hopo S K intus manios straight os to N ek te S cycle e acute two pente apotoxi hoi an auto i ek to n demosio n pra motto n chi te s idia s pistio s p ano n t a i concerning those matters about which the citizens of this b made representations. 
Concerning their own affairs, the following decision was taken concerning the proposal that those who remained true to our friendship should be given the facilities to conduct their own affairs, that our praetor, Governor Quintus Manius should delegate five members of the Senate who seemed to him appropriate in the light of their public actions and individual good faith. <laughs> Egyptian Greek, mid-2nd century BC By around 150 BC Egyptian Greek had monophthongized diphthongs and lost vowel length distinction. <inaudible> Vowels Confusion of Omicron with Omega and of Epsilon with I in Egypt begin from this period on. However, Upsilon was not confused with Oi before the 1st century BC, so is still represented in the intermediate phase of O. Upsilon remained rounded, but apparently merged with I in certain conditions. See sample text below. Further confusion of Omicron, Omega, and O is also common, indicating a neutralization of O and U, perhaps with a closer articulation of O. However, distinction between close and mid-back vowels is still maintained in the chart, because this development was likely an isolated regional trait related to Coptic influence, not affecting the development of the language generally. Eta was apparently distinguished from epsilon in quality, but at the same time was not regularly confused with iota except under certain phonetic contexts. See sample text below. Therefore, it may represent the intermediate stage of a near-close vowel, e pushed up the frontal axis to i, along with the raising of i to e. Once again, this new vowel is also the prevocalic value of a. An alternative route of development taken by other scholars is that i, having initially monophthongized as ash, and epsilon, e, merged to acquire a middle value of distinguished from the new close mid, e, written eta, which would then be raised to e, once eta merged with iota. Diphthongs The transition of O and U from O, E, U, to A beta, E beta, was likely already in progress. A probable intermediate semi vocalic stage is therefore presented here. The diphthong, Y, was apparently retained in Egyptian at least in this century. <laughs> stop and former stop consonants Evidence for a fricative gamma in Egyptian Greek dates as far back to the 4th century BC. From the 2nd century BC, these include omissions and insertions of gamma before a front vowel which indicate a palatal fricative allophone in such positions. However, these may not have been standard pronunciations. Beta likely did not become fricative till the 1st century AD. Fricative pronunciation for aspirates may have been generalized even later in Egyptian Greek. Other consonants Aspiration may have begun to disappear from popular speech in the 1st century BC. Accentuation The accent had changed to a stress accent. Sample phonetic transcription The following late Ptolemaic Egyptian papyrus from 154 BC is rendered in popular pronunciation including the loss of vowel length distinction and shift to a stress accent. The substitution of I for epsilon points to monophthongization, for oi, this is still in the intermediate phase of o, as inferred by the lack of confusion with upsilon. The interchange of iota for eta and upsilon suggests an early raising to i for the former and loss of lip rounding for the latter. This occurs only in highly restricted phonetic conditions, i.e., in labial environments, or may be an isolated dialectal trait. Horrocks transcription already has a fricative gamma with a palatal allophone before front vowels. Singagrami te hesperu thygotri malo de isogen en toi mesor meni. Kalos poiseus apostelai moi imichun aleu. Jegraf hymen hina ida tai perigeno de ice ten hemeron Greek pronunciation, si, arame t hisperu t ya tri, melo de i sajin en du meso re mi ni, ka los po je, sis apo still e mo hi mik un e lu. Jerap hi min hina i dite. 
Paraje nu des te, en he Marin, I have made a contract with the daughter of Hesperos, and I shall marry her in the month of Mesor. Please send half a chose a liquid measure of oil. I have written to you so that you may know. Come for the wedding day. Topic: <laughs> Popular pronunciation, first century BC, second century AD. The loss of vowel length and the spread of Greek under Alexander the Great led to a reorganization of the vowels in the phonology of Koine Greek. There were no longer distinctions of long and short vowels in popular speech. The monophthongization process was over by the 1st century BC with the final merger of oi and upsilon. Topic: <laughs> Former diphthongs. In the Roman period, the o and u diphthongs developed narrower articulations, possibly closing to a, a beta, e, e beta, or even, depending on when lip rounding was lost, a, a beta, and e, e beta. Before the 4th century AD, interchanges of o, u with alpha, upsilon, o, epsilon, upsilon, o are still more common than confusions with ab, eb. So many, if not most, speakers probably preserved the earlier pronunciations of the second element as a semi-vowel or labialized consonant. Topic. Stop and former stop consonants By the first century the voiced consonants β and γ became fricatives, β, and though delta probably remained plosive till the third century. Despite the lack of clear evidence for the fricativization of aspirated plosives in the coin, phi, θ, and chi perhaps started to become fricatives in areas outside Egypt such as the northern Mediterranean. See discussion below. Topic. Other consonants Aspiration had probably dropped out of popular speech, but possibly remained a characteristic of learned speech. Accentuation lost distinctions of high and high-low tones, leaving only a high tone for a stress accent. Topic. Sample phonetic transcription The following papyrus letter from 100 AD is again transcribed in popular coin pronunciation. It now shows fricative values for the second element in diphthongs O, U and for beta, except in transliterations of Latin names, but aspirated plosives remain plosive. Monophthongization and loss of vowel length are clearly seen in the graphic interchanges of iota, a, upsilon, oi and omega, o. Also, there is frequent post-nasal voicing of voiceless stops, which is strengthened in Egypt because of Coptic influence but eventually standardized everywhere and as a rule in modern Greek. Lucios Belenos Gemelos Sabanoi Toi Hoi Oi Oiterin You aun paises comisamenos mo ten epistolin pemzis my pindaran ice ten polin ton pediophilaca tes dionysiados epa eratse mi hermanax haina aten labe ice kerkesucha katamathan ton aliona auto epa pycnos estin kai tali ex aten ekopse phyta haina enpyros cope ta malonta ekoptistai Greek pronunciation, Lucios B. La, nos emelos sa bino to hi jo si aaron, eb un p y e, sas komi same n o z mu te, n epistola, n pem p, sis my pindaran as te, m bolan tom badio p yalaka tis jonisiados, e pi e wrote, se mi er monix in a a f, ton levi as sur suka katama t i n ton e l e on a a f, two, e pi p y nos estin c e t eli e k s a f ton e cops p y ta, ina m b Heroes co pi ta melanda e coptist e, Lucius Bellinus Gemellus to his son Sabinus greetings. On receipt of my letter you will kindly send me Pindarus the field guard from Dionysius to the city, as Hermanax has asked me for permission to take him to Kirkesucha to examine his olive grove, as it is dense and he wants to cut out some trees from it, so that those to be cut down may be cut skillfully. Fourth century AD. By the 4th century AD, the loss of vowel length distinction and aspiration was most probably generalized. Eta was often confused with iota, hence pronounced i, but still occasionally with epsilon, presumably pronounced e, as it still is today in eastern i, e, Pontic and Cappadocian Greek dialects. 
Fricative values for former voiced and aspirate stop consonants were probably already common, however, some dialects may have retained voiced and aspirate stop consonants until the end of the first millennium. The pronunciation suggested here, though far from being universal, is essentially that of modern Greek except for the continued roundedness of y. Vowels There is some confusion between eta and iota in Attic and Asia Minor two centuries earlier. However, in the papyri, it is only from this period that interchange with symbols for i becomes as common as that between iota, a epsilon, i or upsilon. The confusion between y and i had begun as early as the 2nd century BC in Egyptian Greek, but it was most probably not generalized in all phonetic positions yet. Topic. Former diphthongs The full transition of O and U to avenue, ev, may have been generalized by this time. Topic. Stop and former stop consonants Despite the lack of evidence for the latter change in Egyptian papyri, it is perhaps not an unreasonable assumption that fricative values for both former voiced stops and voiceless aspirated stops were common in many other dialects. It is uncertain as to when the palatal allophones for velars, k, and, x, appeared. Other consonants Topic. Accentuation The stress accent system was probably generalized. Topic. Sample phonetic transcription The following excerpt from a late 4th century AD papyrus letter is rendered in late Roman, early Byzantine era popular coin. Vowel length loss and monophthongization are presumed to be nearly universal in all regions, as is seen in the familiar interchanges of iota, a upsilon, oi epsilon, i and omega, omicron. The misspelling of hymacy for hemacy again suggests, as noted above, that both eta and upsilon merged with iota, a before labials. By now, however, eta earlier coin, e, had possibly fully raised to, i, in all positions, as is shown in the transcription. Aspiration has been lost, and both voiced plosives and voiceless aspirated plosives have become fricatives. The omission of gamma in the misspelling hi a vov ta hi j may reflect a palatal allophone, a velar fricative, before front vowels. Te kiria mo ad elfi manitane prob omicron sigma adolfo charon, pro mu n pantan ukomai toi kirioi theoi peri tes eses holoclarias hopos hi inanta soi kai uthimounti apalebase ta par emo gramata gi noskin se telo kiria mo adolf apelv pros patronin tun engyesamanon mo dakes a pi o e tu ek tu mis thou mo enon hymisi greek pronunciation t si ri a mu ale phi mana tini provos ale phos seren pro men pandon evesome to si rio theta e omicron peri tis cis olicli rius opos y genonda si ceef theta i mundi apo lavis ta par emu ramata g no si n se theta elo si ri a mu ale phi apel theta e pros patronin tun a e semeno n mu X ap af 2 ek 2 mis theta umu en an imisi. To my lady sister Manatine Probus her brother greetings. Above all I pray to the Lord God concerning your well-being that you receive my letter in good health and in good spirits. I want you to know, my lady sister, that you must go to Petronius my guarantor. Get from him out of my pay one and a half talents. Diachronic phonetic description Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Loss of vowel quantity distinction The ancient distinction between long and short vowels was lost in popular speech at the beginning of the coin period. By the mid-2nd century BCE, however, the majority system had undergone important changes, most notably monophthongization, the loss of distinctive length, and the shift to a primary stress accent. 
From the 2nd century BC, spelling errors in non-literary Egyptian papyri suggest stress accent and loss of vowel length distinction. The widespread confusion between Omicron and Omega in Attic inscriptions starting in the 2nd century AD was probably caused by a loss of vowel length distinction. Transition to stress accent The means of accenting words changed from pitch to stress, meaning that the accented syllable had only one tone option high and was presumably louder and or stronger. This shift directly corresponded with monophthongization and the loss of vowel timing distinctions, which destroyed the environment in which a pitch accent could be sustained. From the mid 2nd century BC, spelling errors all over the Mediterranean, including occasional graphic omissions of unaccented vowels, suggest a loss of vowel length distinction, which is commonly thought to result in the loss of tonal accent. More evidence of stress accent appears in poetry starting from the late 2nd century AD, early 3rd century AD. Diphthongs Spurious diphthongs Before a consonant, the diphthong A had started to become monophthongal in Attic as early as the 6th century BC, and pronounced like E, probably as E. From the late 4th century BC in Attic, the spurious diphthong, pseudo -diphthong a now notating both etymological a and etymological e came to be pronounced like i, probably as i, with the quality that the digraph still has in modern Greek. Before a vowel, the diphthong a did not follow the same evolution as pre-consonantal a. One theory to explain this difference is that pre-vocalic a may have kept a diphthongal value e -j until the 4th century BC, the j being progressively perceived as a glide from e to the next vowel. From the late 4th century BC, the pre-vocalic diphthong a came to be confused with eta, which implies that, unlike before a consonant, it retained the value e, probably with a loss of openness distinction with eta, for later evolution, refer to eta below. Starting from the 6th century in Attic, the diphthong O had been monophthongized and confused with O. While its initial value had probably been O, it must have evolved to U quite early, possibly in the 6th century BC, and at any rate before 350 BC, this vowel quality has been preserved through modern times. Topic: <laughs> Short first element I diphthongs. Diphthong I was probably monophthongized at first as epsilon. This value is attested in Boeotian in the early 4th century BC with the Boeotian spelling of eta for I. Confusion of I with epsilon suggests that this transition had taken place by the mid 2nd century BC in Egyptian Greek. Further confusion between I and epsilon is found in Palestine in the early 2nd century, and the confusion between I and epsilon starting from c. 125 AD in Attic suggests that the monophthongization took place in the early 2nd century AD in learned Attic. Allen thinks the transition to e, i.e. loss of openness distinction with epsilon to have taken place later. While Allen is not very explicit on this point, this theory seems based on the observation that while both eta and i are confused with epsilon, i is not confused with eta. However, not all scholars seem to agree. No reference on this point of debate has been found. Diphthong oi was monophthongized as y, or y, depending on when the loss of vowel length distinction took place. This is attested in Boeotian in the early as the 3rd century BC with a spelling of upsilon for oi, but this was probably a dialectal trait. Still, diphthong oi must have kept a diphthongal value at least in learned language until Roman times, as it is transcribed as o in Latin. Further evidence of monophthongization is found from the early 1st century BC in Egyptian Greek, as well as in the early 2nd century AD in Palestine. Monophthongization in learned language seems attested by a upsilon spelling for oi found in a text dated from the early 2nd century AD and another from c. 240 AD look up note on evolution of upsilon for subsequent evolution. Koine Greek initially seems to feature diphthong yi, which had been progressively monophthongized to y, written upsilon for y in Attic from the 6th century BC to the 4th century BC but retained in other Greek dialects. 
It was later monophthongized as y or y, depending on when the loss of vowel length distinction took place. The author of these lines has not found any reference on when this change took place, but this transition may be phonologically linked to, and at any rate is quite unlikely to have taken place after, the similar transition of oi to y. See discussion on upsilon below for subsequent evolution. Topic: Short first element u diphthongs. Diphthongs o and u lost their ancient value of o, e, u, and fortified to a fricative consonantal pronunciation of a beta, e beta, or avenue, ev, through the likely intermediate stages of a, e, u, and then a beta, e beta. Sporadic confusions of o, u with ab, eb, which attest a fricative pronunciation, are found as early as 3rd century BC Boeotia and in 2nd century BC Egypt. Further such confusions appear rarely in the papyri at the beginning of the 1st century AD. However, Gignick notes that before the late Roman, early Byzantine period spellings with alpha upsilon, o epsilon upsilon, o are more common, which more likely represent the earlier transitional phases of a, eu, or a beta, e beta. Allen also believes that the fricative pronunciation was not generalized at once, for instance, Jewish catacombs inscriptions still show a diphthongal value in the 2nd-3rd century AD. Confusion of O and U with ab, eb becomes increasingly common in late Roman and early Byzantine times, which suggests that it had been generalized by this time. Outside of Egypt, spellings with ab, eb are also found in Asia Minor, from the late Roman period. Finally, indirect evidence comes from transcriptions into foreign languages, such as Coptic Hippif for Hippeu 2nd century AD, or Byzantine Late Hebrew, Aramaic transcriptions of O, U with B ab. <laughs> Long first element I diphthongs Diphthong A had started to become monophthongal in Attic at least as early as the 4th century BC as it was often written A and probably pronounced E. In Koine Greek, most A were therefore subjected to the same evolution as original classical, E, and came to be pronounced, I. However, in some inflectional endings mostly first declension dative singular and subjunctive 3s, the evolution was partially reverted from C. 200 BC, probably by analogy of forms of other cases, persons, to eta and was probably pronounced, e, at first look up note on evolution of eta for subsequent evolution, other long first element iota diphthongs i and oi became monophthongal by the 2nd century BC, as they were written alpha and omega, the former was probably pronounced, a, uh, while the later may have been pronounced, at first if openness distinction had not been lost yet, and was eventually pronounced, o, oh, at any rate look up discussion of single vowels omicron and omega below for details. From the 2nd century AD, Atticism caused for a widespread reintroduction of the ancient spelling with the final iota, but in any case was not pronounced. <laughs> Long first element U diphthongs When augmented from U in verbs, diphthong A had been altered to U from the 4th century BC. Other long first element upsilon diphthongs, IA and OI, had become monophthongal from the 1st century BC, as they were written as alpha, eta, and omega. The first was probably pronounced a, uh, while the two later may have been pronounced and at first if openness distinction had not been lost yet, e, and, o, otherwise, and were eventually pronounced, i, and, o, at any rate look up discussions of single vowels omicron and omega and single vowel eta below for details. <laughs> single vowel quality Apart from eta, simple vowels have better preserved their ancient pronunciation than diphthongs. As noted above, at the start of the Koine Greek period, pseudo diphthong A before consonant had a value of I, whereas pseudo diphthong O had a value of U. These vowel qualities have remained unchanged through modern Greek. Diphthong A before vowel had been generally monophthongized to a value of I, and confused with eta, thus sharing later developments of eta. The quality of vowels alpha, e iota, and omicron have remained unchanged through modern Greek, as a, e, i, and o. Vowels omicron and omega started to be regularly confused in Attic inscriptions starting in the 2nd century AD, which may indicate that the quality distinction was lost around this time. However, this may as well indicate the loss of length distinction, with an earlier or simultaneous loss of quality distinction. 
Indeed, the fact that some less systematic confusion is found in Attic inscriptions from the 4th century BC may alternatively point to a loss of openness distinction in the 4th century BC, and the systematization of the confusion in the 2nd century AD would then have been caused by the loss of length distinction. The quality distinction between eta and epsilon may have been lost in Attic in the late 4th century BCE, when pre consonantic pseudo diphthong A started to be confused with iota and pre vocalic diphthong A with eta. C. 150 AD, Attic inscriptions started confusing eta and iota, indicating the appearance of a, i, or i, depending on when the loss of vowel length distinction took place pronunciation that is still in usage in standard modern Greek, however, it seems that some locutors retained the e pronunciation for some time, as Attic inscriptions continued to in parallel confuse eta and epsilon, and transcriptions into Gothic and, to some extent, Old Armenian transcribe eta as e. Additionally, it is noted that while interchange of eta and iota, a does occur in the Ptolemaic and Roman period, these only occur in restrictive phonetic conditions or may otherwise be explained due to grammatical developments. Coin Greek adopted for vowel upsilon the pronunciation, y, of Ionic Attic. Confusion of upsilon with iota appears in Egyptian papyri from the 2nd century BC and 2nd century AD, suggesting a pronunciation of i, but this occurs only in restricted phonetic conditions or may be a regional trait since Coptic did not have y. Transcriptions into Gothic and, to some extent, Armenian suggest that upsilon still retained a, y, pronunciation, and the transition to i, in mainstream Greek is thought to have taken place at the end of the first millennium. Topic. Loss of aspiration The aspirate breathing aspiration, referring here to the phoneme, h, which is usually marked by the rough breathing sign, which was already lost in the Ionic idioms of Asia Minor and the Aeolic of Lesbos Silosis, later stopped being pronounced in Koine Greek. Incorrect or hypercorrect markings of assimilatory aspiration i.e. unaspirated plosive becomes aspirated before initial aspiration in Egyptian papyri suggest that this loss was already underway in Egyptian Greek in the late 1st century BC. Transcriptions into foreign languages and consonant changes before aspirate testify that this transition must not have been generalized before the 2nd century AD, but transcriptions into Gothic show that it was at least well underway in the 4th century AD. Topic. Consonants Among consonants, only beta, delta, gamma, and zeta are certain to have changed from classical Greek. Consonants phi, theta, and chi are assumed to have changed, too, but there is some disagreement amongst scholars over evidence for these. The consonant zeta, which had probably a value of zd, in classical Attic, though some scholars have argued in favor of a value of dz, and the value probably varied according to dialects, see zeta letter for further discussion, acquired the sound z that it still has in modern Greek, seemingly with a geminate pronunciation, zz, at least between vowels. Attic inscriptions suggest that this pronunciation was already common by the end of the 4th century BC. Horrocks agrees with Gignac on finding evidence that geminate consonants tended to simplify beginning from the 3rd century BC, as seen in their arbitrary use in less literate writing. However, degemination was not carried out universally, as seen where the South Italian, Southeastern, and some Asia Minor dialects preserve double consonants. Consonants phi, theta, which were initially pronounced as aspirates, p, and t, developed into fricatives, f, and theta. On the other hand, there is no specific evidence of the transition of consonant chi from aspirate, k, to fricative x tilde c sedilla in the Koine Greek period. There is evidence for fricative theta in Laconian in the 5th century BC, but this is unlikely to have influenced Koine Greek which is largely based on Ionic Attic. According to Allen, the first clear evidence for fricative phi and theta in Koine Greek dates from the 1st century AD in Latin Pompeian inscriptions. Yet, evidence suggests an aspirate pronunciation for theta in Palestine in the early 2nd century, and Jewish catacomb inscriptions of the 2nd 3rd century AD suggest a pronunciation of f for phi, t for theta, and k for chi, which would testify that the transition of theta to a fricative was not yet general at this time, and suggests that the transition of phi to a fricative may have happened before the transition of theta and chi. There may be evidence for fricative phi in 2nd century AD Attic, in the form of omission of the second element in the U diphthongs which pronounced EF, EF before phi. 
Armenian transcriptions transcribe Kai as K until the 10th century AD, so it seems that Kai was pronounced as aspirate by at least some speakers until then. There is disagreement as to when consonants beta, gamma, and delta, which were originally pronounced b, d, acquired the value of v, tilde, and that they have in modern Greek. There is evidence of fricative gamma as far back as the 4th century BC, in the form of omissions before a back vowel. In the papyri from the 2nd century BC gamma is sometimes omitted or inserted before a front vowel, which indicates a palatal allophone, or j. However, to Allen these do not seem to have been a standard pronunciation. Some scholars have argued that the replacement of Old Greek with with beta in certain late classical dialects indicates a fricative pronunciation. Ancient grammarians describe the plosive nature of these letters, beta is transcribed as b, not v, in Latin, and Cicero still seems to identify beta with Latin b. Gignick finds evidence from non-literary papyri suggesting a fricative pronunciation in some contexts mostly intervocalic from about the 1st century AD, in the form of the use of beta to transcribe Latin v, which was also undergoing a fortition process from semi-vowel, with to fricative, beta. However, Allen is again skeptical that this pronunciation was generalized yet. Increasingly common confusion of O and U with ab and eb in late Roman and early Byzantine times suggests that the fricative pronunciation of beta was common if not general by this time. Yet, it is not before the 10th century AD that transcriptions of beta as fricative vv or gamma as voiced velar gl pronounced tilde are found in Armenian, which suggests that the transition was not general before the end of the first millennium. However, previous transcriptions may have been learned transcriptions. Georgian loans in the 9th-10th centuries similarly show inconsistency in transcribing beta and gamma as a stop or fricative. Beta is consistently rendered as bb rather than vv, while gamma may be written with an adapted symbol for fricative or with zh, approximating in palatal position, but also with stop gg. There is probable evidence for a peculiarly early shift of d greater than in 6th century BC Ellen, seen in the writing of zeta for delta. Gignick interprets similar spellings in the Egyptian papyri beginning in the 1st century AD as the spirant pronunciation for delta in the coin, but before the 4th century AD these only occur before i. However, not all scholars agree that there is a reasonable phonetic basis for the earlier fricativization of delta before iota. The weakness of final nu, n, frequently before a stop consonant, is attested in Egypt in both Hellenistic and Roman times, seen directly in graphic omission and hypercorrect insertion, though its complete loss would not be carried through until the medieval period and excluding the South Italian, Southeastern, and Asia Minor dialects. The development of voiced allophones b, d, g, of voiceless stops pi, tau, and kappa after nasals is also evidenced in Pamphylia as early as the 4th century BC and in the Egyptian papyri mostly Roman period in the interchange with beta, delta, and gamma in post-nasal positions where these letters retained their their ancient plosive values, as noted above, hence mp, ent, nk would later be used for b, d, per gram, via assimilation to the second element. In Egypt this development is seen as an influence of the Coptic substrate. But at the same time, this change has now become standard in modern Greek, and so it appears to have occurred in other areas as well. See also Coin Greek Ancient Greek phonology Modern Greek phonology